Here's a brief history of the rag rug. We've all heard stories, probably in a waste not one not lecture from one of our grandmothers, about dresses that got handed down from one child to the next until they've been worn by five or six kids and there really wasn't much left of them. They'd probably been patched and hemmed and fixed and none of the buttons matched any longer. Well, in the 1600s, those dresses and any other unusable clothing or fabric never got thrown away. They were cut into strips of cloth and used to make floor coverings. What we call the rag rug was a staple in early colonial American culture. Rag rugs weren't seen as a chic or colorful way to decorate one's home, but an essential winter survival tool. Settlers used rugs to provide warmth and protection against nasty splinters and sharp objects all too familiar in the rustic homestead. Who had the pleasure, you might ask? of spending countless hours working their fingers to the bone. Let's just say it wasn't much of a hobby for the men about town. The women made the best of the crucial task at hand by coming up with all sorts of creative weaves and patterns, elevating their rags. So much so that by 1890, there was a massive arts and crafts movement. Rag rugs alongside pottery, stained glass, and furniture craftsmanship were celebrated for their artistic merits. The rug was not just for the floor anymore, but a piece of art that demanded prime wall space. However, the glory days of the rug would be short-lived. By 1910, women's suffrage followed by World War I would demand all of the homemakers' attention. Women put down scraps of cloth for picket signs and scraps of metal. Follow that with the roaring 20s and you've got yourself an obsolete art form. After all, why sit around a fireplace hooking and braiding when you could be out on the town dancing and drinking? Let's just say interest in rug making was a thing of the past and so their traditions were long forgotten. Okay, pause right there because we all know what happened next. The Great Depression. And out of necessity rose the humble rag rug. By this time, techniques were limited and the emphasis on the practical aspects of rugs overrode artistic pursuits. The ebb and flow of the rag rug's popularity continued much like this throughout the 20th century. It had another moment in the 70s. And as for today, well, you may be wondering why, when I have the internet, would I spend my evenings on this 19th century hobby? Sure, you could spend thousands of dollars buying cute rag rugs all at overpriced specialty shops, but consider this. Maybe, just maybe, you shut down your computer, take a deep breath, and return to a craft that's as equally time-consuming as it is charming. After all we've fought for, ladies, why not pour yourself a glass of wine, tune into your favorite podcast, and make your own damn rugs.